I'm Delta Work, and it's time for Very Delta. Our snow is melting. Burlesque superstar Jezebel Thunder is here. But first, do you want to see me go off? Because I think you want to see me go off. M. Oh. M. Mom! Do you slay queen like me? Do you wear poinsettias like me? Ooh. Do you flock your tree like me? Do you want to come down my chimney? Are you a mistletoe like me? Are you a nutcracker like me? Well, if you are, you must be very Mary Delta. I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta, a luxury public access podcast and YouTube talk show where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite interesting people to sit on the couch and get Very Delta. Very Delta is for the woman who loves Trafari around her neck, especially at the holidays. This episode is getting ready to rumble, but first, let's get into some things that are very Delta. I love having my picture taken. When I get in drag, I want it documented. I want filters. I want pictures. Whoever's around me, I want to take a picture with them. I would like to make a video. I like making boomerangs. I'm not saying I do it all well, but I like doing it. When people have the Snapchat filters, bring as many of them as you can. I love all of that. I love documenting what I do, and I love documenting who is around me when I'm doing it because I think it's a whole lot of fun. And honestly... The cell phone has like three cameras on it. I, I, I'm i assuming they're all working uh, all together. I don't know if you're supposed to use them separately. Regardless, document the stuff when I'm in drag. But there has to be some parameters. I mean, there really has to be some moment where you step back and you look and you're like, I think this is what we need to document versus I think that's what we don't need to document. And I think about this because part of what I do oftentimes involves a meet and greet opportunity. Many times when you appear at a nightclub, whether it's like a drag entertainer or a burlesque performer, a singer, or maybe even like bigger names, like, uh, I don't know, or more expensive names, I should say, like going to a celebrity's concert or a stand-up comics show, um, you can purchase your regular general admission tickets, you can purchase elevated seats, and then you can purchase a meet and greet opportunity. And what happens is part of paying for the event uh, is done through those sales of, of not just the tickets, but the meet and greet, because people that are now the VIPs will come in and they'll have the opportunity to meet the artist and take a picture. The thing about a meet and greet that's always interesting to me is I feel like it's not really actually ever a meet and greet. It's just this opportunity to go in and take a picture because it kind of feels like a cattle call. And please know that when there are entertainers there doing that, they're not always the ones that are responsible for people coming in and out to take the pictures. So I personally love meeting and greeting. I want to know who you are, where you're from, uh, why it is that you're interested in being there to see me or to see the show that I'm part of. That doesn't always get to take place because there's so many people. So there's never really like a definition. It just is called a meet and greet, but there's not a definition that says you will get 10 minutes with this person or you will get 30 seconds with this person. I do my best to get a little moment, but sometimes they're like, hey, picture, you're done. Sometimes I'll be in a place where that opportunity is not provided, but the audience may be lingering around in a bar or something like that. I'll do my best to go out, say hi, especially if it's in a city that I'm not normally, uh, I'm not, especially if it's in a city that I don't normally visit or I've not been before. Uh, I know that people have, you know, taken their time and they want to, they want to say hi. And I want to say hi too. What happens is if it's not a formal meet and greet and you can tell that the crowd is very rowdy, everyone's going to be pulling people in different directions and people are going to get mad if you don't take a picture with every single person. And this is not to say like, oh, I'm so loved by everyone. But what it is to say is people want to document where they were that night. And they're like, hey, I saw Delta or I saw some drag queen and they want to take a picture. If there's not a formal meet and greet and you go out to say hi to the few people that you do know, other people that you don't know that you're not spending time with start to get angry. So all it takes is just one post that I tried to take a picture with this person and they were a bitch. And it's like, 
there's not a formal meet and greet or some people will come up to the paid meet and greet and say, hey, I want to get a picture. And you're like, I've got to go through the line first because that's part of my contract is to go through the line. And then anyone that's left, I'll come out from this little stanchion and I'll and I'll take pictures with whoever. If you don't do that and then people are like, oh, well, why do I have to wait in line? Why should I pay? You're a bitch. I shouldn't have to pay for this. I didn't set the rule. You know what I mean? Like that's just part of the deal. That's par for the course. But another thing that sometimes happens that's really kind of fucked up is when people find their way backstage and like know someone from backstage by like six degrees of separation or whatever it is. And they're like, I want to take a picture with you. And you're like standing there in your underwear. You're trying to change no wig. And you're like, hey, baby, like I'll be out in like two seconds. Just give me two seconds and I'll be out, even though. You know, you may not want to go out because you've already finished a meet and greet. You've already taken pictures. You've already spent your time in the bar dressed fully, you know, to present yourself for a really nice photo. And people are like, no, I don't care if you're in your underwear. I've got my friends with me. We don't give a fuck. We know the queens. We don't care. But you know what? I care because that's my personal time. And I don't want you to document pictures of me unless I decide that I don't mind if you take pictures of me in my underwear. But to make the assumption uh, for any entertainer that... Well, we don't care because we know you. We we know all the queens. Well, you can know all the queens you want. I'm going to let you know me the way that I want you to know me and the way that I want it documented. There's a million pictures out there of me looking crazy, crazy. I remember I had an amazing time the first time I was ever at Axis Nightclub in Columbus. And it was with Nina West before she was on Drag Race and Virginia West before she established her own bar called District West in Columbus. And we got so drunk and we had a blast. And me and Nina West were ripping our clothes off and we were and we had a good time. And I'm not embarrassed about that. I was on stage in my underwear. We had a blast and I'll never forget that. But that was on my call. That was when I decided I wanted to present that. If I'm backstage and I'm changing and you come back there with your camera, oh, hey, bitch, oh, I'm documenting this. If you don't get that camera out of my face, I'm going to break it. I will break it and I will have no problem with that. And you can tell me that you're going to call your lawyer that you don't have on retainer because, you know, you don't even have your rent. You don't even have your rent paid. So you, you don't definitely don't have a lawyer. But get the camera out of people's faces. Like, just give it two seconds. If somebody says... I will come out and take a picture with you as soon as I get fully dressed and I come out so that you can have a great picture. But so many people want to say, oh, I don't care. I don't care. I'm coming to this dressing room. I know you, bitch. I don't care if you're some day drunk that hangs out at a bar. I don't care if you're somebody who knows me because I shop at your CVS or whatever. Let me decide how I want to present myself in the picture. And by the way, when you do get those pictures in a, in a dressing room and you see people in the back with a wig cap on or in a compromising position, what do you get out of posting that? Like, why? What do you want people to know? Like, hmm, I know these bitches better, better than all this. No, you know us because of this. Not better than this. When you come backstage and you start calling people out of their name and telling people, I don't mind how you look. My friends don't care. You're trying to tell people, oh, I this drag doesn't impress me. I, I, I know you all better than this. My friend's a drag queen. Well, good for your friend. Good for your friend. That's wonderful. But when you come back here and you think you know us differently or I know you better than all this, no, you know because of this. So don't call people out of their name. Don't try to take pictures of people when they're fucking bent over or they're wearing their rip tights or they're taking their makeup off because you think it's so funny or telling somebody, oh, I'm, I'll, I'll crop the picture. Don't worry about it. You're not going to crop the picture. You're just going to post it however you post it, and then you're going to take people. And then th that what happens is then people start distrusting other people, and then they say, guess what? No pictures ever. No pictures ever. I'm just telling you how it happens. I'm just telling you. This is across the board. People go to drag con all the time, and they wonder why they, they have to stand in lines and take pictures, and why, why do they have to be in a certain way? Because the lighting is horrible. There's people all around taking pictures, so people are getting horrifying angles. People want control over this. As an entertainer, you paint your face in front of a mirror. So you want people to look the way that you want to present it. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Matthew Anderson always said, I'll say it before. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Matthew Anderson said, 
Putting a filter on a picture is just the next level in cosmetics application. That's all it is. People want to be seen the way that they see themselves in the mirror. They don't want to be broken down and have people go, I'm real. I, I, I have stubble. I'm real. Uh, I, I, I don't have any shoes on. Why do you need to document that? Maybe for a documentary that the person knows is being made, but on your cell phone, in your Instagram story where you tag and you're like, oh, look at this bug. That's not cool. You're not supporting anyone. You certainly don't know anyone better. You're just being gross. There's a very simple, very Delta code of conduct for taking a picture or being at a meet and greet. Absolutely 100 zillion million percent. Do not interrupt someone when they're already having a conversation with someone else. Wait for there to be a break in the conversation. Wait for the entertainer to turn and make eye contact. But don't walk up and go, hey, 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 hey I got to go. I need a picture. Move over. When you do that, I'm not gonna, I don't want to take a picture. Now, I will take the picture, and I think that you know that I will because you know that I like taking pictures with people and I like having a good time, and you know a lot of these other queens won't fuck with you and won't give you time, but after we take the picture, I will admonish you and I will tell you, the next time you do this, don't interrupt me because I think it's fucking inappropriate and rude. I wouldn't do it to you, and my job is not to reduce myself to your level, but to bring you to mine. Somebody's gotta teach you this, and my job here is to teach you this. My job is to let you know you need to be corrected. I don't care if you're 21 years old and it's your first time at the bar, or you're 61 years old. These manners go across the board for everyone. Second of all, turn your fucking flash on. Please turn your flash on when you take a picture. If you don't turn your flash on, there's no need to publish the picture. If somebody looks like a complete gargoyle, there's no reason. I don't want to look like that. I know what I look like in overhead lighting. Let's do some favors. Let's document this so it looks beautiful on your Instagram page and I can tag it as well. Because if you tag me and we're friends and you see that I didn't share the picture, that's because it's butt ugly. That's because I'm not going to share it. Whether you loved it or not, I'm not going to share it if I don't think I look right. And I'm not going to share it if I don't think you look right. If I think that you look awful, I'll filter the picture and I'll do the way I know that you look. I'm going to do that favor for you. I want you to do it for me. Second of all, we all want pearly whites. We all want white eyes. Don't go into a picture and just go like this in Facetune until somebody's teeth are so white that it looks like just one block all the way across. That's not realistic. Now, I get it. What we're doing here isn't completely real. But our job is to make it look as a reasonable facsimile of the way that you remember that person looking. If they have uh, something on their shoulder, if a bird shit on their shoulder in the middle of the picture, I don't know, put it in your Instagram story and drop a little flower over the shoulder and say like, oh, I was just putting a few stickers and GIFs on here from Giphy. Just something cute. Do people some favors in these pictures. Ask. Use a... First ask for permission. Then use a flash, use somebody else's phone as well. I mean, as much light as possible and use a filter over these pictures. My God, everybody wants to look good. When you're taking a picture with someone, especially uh, a, an entertainer that's wearing a costume or obviously is wearing a wig or maybe their hair, maybe it's their real hair. Who knows? Uh, don't put your hand or your shoulder or your arm over them and yank the wig down because you're like, oh, I love you so much. I, I want to show how much I love you that I need to rip your wig off. I want to put it like this and then watch everyone show like, we don't give a fuck. We're friends. Fuck the wig. Like, no, not fuck the wig. Fuck you. Keep your, keep your fuck. Fuck you. Keep your arm off of my wig. Also, if you smell under your arms like fucking onions, don't rub your armpit all over me. I, I don't want to I don't want to smell like that. You can smell like that. And maybe that's hot. And maybe like later we can smell it. But like as far as the costume goes, like I don't want to have to take vodka in a spray bottle and clean my costume off because it smells like full ass Vidalia onion. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, just don't do that part. Um, don't ever, 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 ever walk up to somebody and go, your makeup is so pretty. Oh my God. I love you. Don't, if you touch, look, but don't touch, don't touch. Look, but don't touch, don't touch. There's a song that says that. Keep your fucking hands off of people's faces. We've gone through three years now, what we're going into a fourth year of communicable diseases where people, and you're going to go up to somebody and I got to touch you or walking up to somebody go, I'm a kisser. Let me kiss you. Like, uh, I'm not <laughs> actually, I don't want you. I've never met you in my whole life. 
sure, I would love to like, I would love to know you, but like, I don't need the wetness of inside the pink part of your mouth touching like my orifices. Unless it's my ass after I tell you not to do these things, then you can get that pink part of your mouth. You can get that pink part of your mouth and kiss the pink part of my ass. You heard? I'm not a person who is about the bullshit or is about um, placating people. I like to find something about someone to have a very real interaction with. If I say to somebody, I really like your hat, it's because I really like their hat. If I say to somebody, oh, I've been waiting to meet you. We were interacting on Instagram. I'm happy to meet you. But if there's somebody that I don't know and I don't know what to say, it's absolutely okay for me to say, hey, how you doing? What's your name? Those are real ways to interact with people because I absolutely, one million percent, no matter how angry I get about filters, no matter how bugged I get about people touching my face and all these other things, this is not everyone, but it's enough that it becomes a point of conversation. What I'm saying is I like meeting people. I don't need to feed people bullshit because Every, I feel like I don't need to feed people bullshit. I feel like everyone here is enough bullshit. I really do love meeting every single person that I get to meet because, yes, it's a blessing. Have a blessed day. People say that all the time. You're the blessing. I'm a blessing. This is a blessing. We're so lucky. We're so gratitude. We are lucky. I am lucky. I love going places and meeting people. But that doesn't mean I don't love going and meeting people with parameters and saying to people, you can't just grab a hold of my clothes and yank me here and there. You can't just rip my wig off. You can't just touch my face. Like you wouldn't go up to somebody else and do that. Like you wouldn't just go up to somebody in public and do that. Why is it that when someone's in drag, it's okay to do that and then tell people, oh, stop acting so fussy. It's not that serious. It is that serious. It's serious enough that you bought a ticket to come watch. If I'm in a meet and greet and somebody comes up to me and says, I love you. And I say back to them, I love you back. I do. I, I, lo I really do love everyone. I don't know why there has to be a degree of how much you love someone. There's different kinds of love. I love that you exist. I love that you allow me to have a platform. I love that you would encourage me. I love that you have a cell phone bill, but you decided to pay $15 or $5 or a cab ride or an Uber in order to come see me. There's everything to love in that. It doesn't mean that I'm in love with you. It doesn't mean that I want to fuck you. It doesn't mean that I want to marry you. It doesn't mean that I want to loan you $300 and never ask for the money back. It means that I love what we give to one another. I give you something to think about, something to learn, something to enjoy, something to laugh about. And you give me the space to do it, the ears to listen to it, the platform to sometimes make a fool of myself, sometimes teach a lesson, sometimes cry together, sometimes laugh at the ridiculousness of life. I love you. Do you want to see me take a break? I think you want to see me take a break. And we are back. I am so excited because there is a storm brewing and she's about to bring the thunder. Please make welcome my extra special guest, the one and only Jezebel Thunder. Yay! Hi. I'm so Gorgeous. excited to be here. I'm so excited. <laughs> when I asked you a long time ago, you were like, let me know because I got to clear the calendar. And you absolutely cleared your calendar. I knew going into the hall. I, I always think of the holidays as like such a pretty time. Mm -hmm. It's it's sparkly and it's uh, it's velvety. It's textural. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I know we're not going to have an episode right on Christmas. Yeah. But the episode leading up has to be beautiful. And it had to be you. Oh, thank you thank so much. You. <laughs> yeah, I definitely cleared my schedule like instantly. I was like, I'll be there. So I'll figure excited. it out. <laughs> I'm so yeah. excited. This is the time of year. Do you like the holidays? I do because it's also my birthday. What day? On the 23rd. Oh, my gosh. So... It's like my holiday, but mm -hmm. it's also Christmas. Right. But it's my holiday. <laughs> so I love it. And like everyone's always like, oh, well, don't you feel like shafted because you only get one gift? And I'm like, no, no, I don't work that way. No. No. Since birth, I'm like, two, please. My birthday yes. is not on Christmas. It's two days before. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm a firm believer that when it's your birthday and somebody goes, oh, I missed your birthday. They think that's like an easy out. But I'm like, oh, no, it's my birthday season. Yeah. Season, you can yeah. take me out to lunch. You can buy me a Starbucks <laughs> gift card. Mm-hmm. Anything. Anytime. Anything. I know. I yeah. do the whole month because it's the holidays. So people go mm. away and they're like, I don't have any money. I have to go on this trip. So I'm like, cool. It's going to start December 1st. And we're going to end at Christmas and yeah. we're going to just do things for my birthday. Because right. if you're going to leave, then we're going to still celebrate. <laughs> right. well, you could actually even extend that and say it's like whatever your astrological sign is, it's that whole season. Oh. We could do that. I like that. I don't know yeah. much about like astrological. Yeah. I know I'm a Capricorn. Like That's all I know. That's a that's a good sign. I'm an Aquarius. So we're kind of back to back. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 January. That's right. They're pretty similar from what I understand. But then there's also, you know, those things that I, I, Raja knows all about all this. Mm. So when we do our very that podcast, we always, she always brings it in. I'm like, girl, bring me the sun, the moon and the stars. I know you're going to. <laughs> she tells me all that. I love um, it. But so uh, I know you and a lot of people know you specifically. Um some people use the term stripper. I use the term ecdesiast. Oh. Yeah. That's fancy. <laughs> One who sheds their skin. I like that. Yeah. I also just say stripper, burlesque dancer. Yeah. I mean, it's all the same. You know, technically. Yeah. Yeah. Some I, people get a little touchy, though, when they're like, oh, you're a stripper. And they're like, I'm not a stripper. Mm-hmm. And you're like, but you're actually taking clothes off. Like, right. That's what you're doing. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I've, I've heard that before. A lot of uh, people who do an actual uh, a, a strip presentation um, and then girls that, for quote unquote, are, are dancers in a club. Sometimes the people think there's this division line. But I feel like a lot of people who do a um, uh, a strip performance in any way, shape or form, regardless of how expensive their items are or not mm. expensive their items are i feel like if they're worth their weight they're not separating themselves from other people going oh i don't do what you do i do this oh yeah you know what i mean because it looks down on someone else right. and it's all like under the sex work umbrella right. so some people are like i'm not associated with any sex work and you're like no but you kind of are <laughs> yeah, you're providing a beautiful fantasy yeah yeah, yeah. which i hope to do on stage yeah you do <laughs> so tell me about Thank what you. you do tell us about about performances um, and I do the art of the teas, mm-hmm. um, and I wear not all expensive. I wish I could afford all the things, but some of it's expensive, some of it's not. But I wear sparkly things on stage, and I get to dance to whatever music I feel like I want to dance to. Sometimes people think burlesque is only like the big band mm-hmm. classic thing, but I love it because it's so. I've just learned so much more about it being in it for like thirteen years. I've learned that it looks like a million different things, and I love right. that. And so what I do is I like choose music that inspires me or that I feel in my soul. And then I create an act out of that. Right. And then I get to perform on stages all over the world and at small bars down the street <laughs> mm-hmm. in people's backyards. Yeah. I performed in a lot of different places and had a lot of dressing rooms, which I'm sure you have also had a lot of different dressing rooms and stages. Yeah. You, yeah. We, we, we are similar in yeah. that what we do is, uh, um, I always I used to think of like um, uh, not just burlesque, but uh, oh, Mark, what's the term I'm looking for? Um, not vaudeville, but somewhere in between there. Anyway, I always feel like the term burlesque can cover a lot of things. Mm-hmm. It can cover not just not just stripping, but also comedy. Uh, it, it can encompass uh, singing. It can encompass mm-hmm. so many things because you're just providing sort of this space of of fantasy and glamour and humor. And, yes. and that's what's so beautiful about what specifically you do is um, sometimes I see people that do um, do a burlesque act and, and it's very serious. And you can be. Mm-hmm. But then sometimes there's a, a, a humor if there's like something gets stuck or something silly happens, but there's always this joy that comes out when you're doing it. Do you feel joyous oh, when you're doing it? Thank you. I do. I do. I like have this cheeky, like someone said once, like a coquettish like mm-hmm. presence on stage. And it actually is whatever I feel in the music is what I project. Right. And I don't know. It de- It really depends on what that is. And if I do have a mess up, like... I rip shit. <laughs> can I say that? Yeah, can you say can say shit? whatever you want. <laughs> I rip things. I just like tear things. But I also like to interact with people and I like people to feel what I feel. Right. Like in the audience. That's what's important to me too. It's also important that I don't mess things up and look horrible, but right. it's also important that they're entertained. 
And some people, and it's not wrong, but some people do burlesque and they're just like, it's all me. Mm. Look at me. Look at my shiny shoes and my costume and look at this. And I'm like, yeah, look at me. But also I want to make sure you're highly entertained and that you're having a great time. And that's like, you know, what's really important to me. Have you ever had any like recognizable or memorable like slip ups, like a shoe broke or a strap broke and (laughs) you couldn't come back from it or you just made a part of it? Have I? I've had a lot of of stories. I have far too many embarrassing moments. Everything that I think a performer, even in drag, everything you think could go wrong or that you fear could go wrong has happened to me. Right. I've had, um, I've had, I just told the story recently. I was side stage getting ready to go on and perform. I'm going to talk about my, I'm going to a little TMI for a second, but side stage ready to get ready to perform. The act before me was on. I'm watching them. All of a sudden my body was like, and your period is going to oh. ruin your costume. And I was like, fuck. Whoa. <laughs> and I had to run backstage, run to the bath. That's happened. Mm-hmm. I've had the wrong, um, in my head, I had the wrong position in the show. So I was side stage waiting to perform and I was up next didn't realize it oh my until they called my name to introduce me. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh my God, like panicky. Uh-huh. And I, Violet Chachki was in that show too. And I remember they were upstairs in the dressing room. Like everyone was helping me pin my costume on and get ready and run back downstairs. Um, last year I broke my ankle oh, performing. No. Yeah. How do you get out of that when you're I, on stage? 20 seconds into my act. And I'm like at this small bar. And so you can dance on the table. You can dance on a bar top. And I was like, I'm going to be safe and be on the floor. Mm-hmm. 20 seconds in, I did a little spin. I did a little high kick, which I'm not super flexible, but I get my leg up pretty high. High kicked, collapsed on the ground. And I like kicked my foot up in the air because I was like, oh, shit, I just fell in front of all these people. Oh my gosh. What do I do? So I'm like, floor work. And I looked at my foot and also probably to my, my foot was like to the side. Oh, you could see it. I could see it, but oh, I didn't know it was broken, God. so I pushed it back, and I rolled and tried to do the sexy like floor work, and I stood back up and then collapsed, and I was like, "Oh, I think I'm done. I think I can't. Whoa. I think I, I think I might have hurt something." <laughs> yeah. Whoa. It was crazy. That it's funny now. It's not funny in the moment, well, but it's, yeah, <laughs> but it's frightening. That is so scary. Yeah, because you never think that stuff can happen, and it, uh, apparently it can. It can. Or less I guess. is a dangerous sport performing. Is a dangerous sport. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Especially when you're not also not familiar with like a certain space or. Mm-hmm. Um, but then they also say, you know, like the, the idea of like a car accident, a lot of car accidents happen right when you're close to home because you're oh, yeah. so used to it. You're like, oh, this is old hat. I'm fine. Yeah. And that's when, you know, your your defenses <laughs> go down. Uh, when it comes to burlesque and, and performing, are, do you have people that like inspire you, whether it's not another dancer or maybe a singer or mm. a designer or something? Ooh. That's a good question. I'm inspired by a lot of things and a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, music is my first go-to for sure. But I take inspiration, not take, like steal it, but I like I get inspiration from watching dancers, like sure. professional dancers, from watching drag queens like on stage because I've done so many drag shows. I really always enjoy doing that. We need more burlesque and drag shows again. I agree. I think I don't think a lot of people realize how many drag queens and burlesque performers are really great friends mm-hmm. and, and and totally understand the idea of putting something on and doing it and having a great time and loving it, but also loving the idea of taking it off and and, and I don't even mean stripping it off on stage. I mean physically washing it off. Mm-hmm. And um, as friends being able to see one another and go, I know what you do. I can see I, I, I can see you playing and I can remember what you look like not <laughs> when you're fully done up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a special place uh, in there between burlesque or strippers or uh, or dancers, whoever, whatever term people identify with and drag. Mm-hmm. You know, I think uh, you mentioned we were talking off camera about Tito, who is amazing to yes, me. I love friend. seeing... Um, people who sort of break those boundaries and realize because I feel like as long as I've seen burlesque performers like yourself, um, Natasha, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, Dita, Catherine, um, uh, Dirty, mm-hmm. when I watch them, I feel like every person in general can take something from that and maybe do not make a career out of that, but they can learn that there's something sexy in them. Yeah. Like there really is. It doesn't, you don't have to go, oh, I don't look like that because I can't do that. I remember in an interview one time, Dita, 
I don't know if she said it or she suggested, but it was this this story about that you don't always have to be the most beautiful to be glamorous, oh. mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I mean, fortunately, you are beautiful and <laughs> glamorous, but not everyone is going to feel <laughs> is going to feel that way. Yeah. Even though everyone does have their own beautiful way, um, but there's so much you can take from that. Do you know what I mean? I agree. Yeah, I definitely agree. Like I did not feel I still have issues sometimes, but I did not feel the most glamorous, beautiful, especially being like, you know, being a black woman and growing mm-hmm. up in uh, Norwalk yeah. <laughs> or Norwalk and wherever else I grew up. But like I didn't have a lot of black friends. I had my family, but I just always in you know, representation was not the way it is now. And so mm-hmm. I gravitated towards magazines that were mostly like white faces. And so I always grew up with this like, oh, I can't, I'm not beautiful. And then I found burlesque eventually. And I just started to feel like I came into my own and I started to feel Mm -hmm. who I was more through it, which is really strange. Not, I mean, it's not that strange, but I guess it's probably similar to, um, you know, like drag too. I was watching like We're Here the other day and Bob was saying, you know, through drag, they learned about, their blackness and the, mm-hmm. and their sexuality and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, like that's totally how I feel with burlesque, too. It just taught me so much. And I got to meet so many people and see other black performers, too. And I was like, oh, wow, it's not just me. And they all look so different. And everyone's a different shape and a different skin tone. Everyone's different um, personality on stage. And I was like, wow, right. this is beautiful. Like it doesn't look just one way. It and that's doesn't. so important to like recognize it really yeah. doesn't. And also, like, I mean, just the idea uh, of what you present. Like, uh, I did a, an event a long time ago. It was probably 10 years ago. And it was in Palm Springs. And I remember there was tons of people that were related to, like, the Pinup Girl brand. Mm. And they were all uh, entertaining. And I could see that like, how much work went into these individual acts that were telling stories mm-hmm. or were giving a point of view. And you were seeing all these different bodies And all these different styles. And it wasn't like a competition like this next person's the big girl. This next person's the black girl. Yeah. It doesn't have to be that way. Like, it it shouldn't be that way. Like, if the show happens to have three performers that are all super, super plus size and and one thin black girl, then that's the lineup. Mm -hmm. That's where it is. And if it's all black entertainers and two Asian girls that are dressed like matadors, well, then, you know what I mean? Like, it's... There's just a variety, and yeah. that's what's so beautiful about about the story that you tell and the way that you tell Thank it with you. your body. I love it. Yeah. I really love it. I would not be the same person, and I'm so grateful for having found burlesque because I get to meet people like you. Like, Aww. You know? I feel like I was thinking about that on the way here. I'm like, I think we met doing Cali's show yeah. maybe at Hamburger Mary's mm-hmm. like when I first started doing burlesque. Yeah. And I was like, wow. That's a long ass time time ago. ago. (laughs) It really is. It really is. Yeah. I love that. I look at that Hamburger Mary's now in West Hollywood and I'm like, oh, it did not used to look that way on the inside. That giant pole in the Uh middle of the stage. Yeah. (laughs) And what about that? That still that's there, that like death defying, like uh, spiral staircase. staircase. (laughs) Everyone's watching you come down. So I feel like whether you're in drag or you're doing a burlesque show or you're a comedian, Everyone's oh going to be a burlesque artist because you have to like move down the stairs and like, I'm telling a story, but I'm just trying to get down the <laughs> yeah. stairs. Exactly. Or carrying your things up the steps oh. when you have all this luggage and the, it's like narrow. Uh-huh. I remember those days. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Those there was, fun. There used to be this hook that hung down and I don't know if it had a light feature or what it had, but I, there was a moment one time coming down and I was like storming down and... um. It was like that Tu Wong Fu moment because it snatched my wig off. And I was like, (gasps) and I tried to like back up into the wig. Like, and I just, there's no coming back. I mean, there's no coming back from it. (laughs) Let's take a break. Oh my God. A mess. It really did happen. And I was like, son of a bitch. And we are back. We're back with my extra special guest, the one and only Jezebel Thunder. Where did where did you come up with Thunder as your name? Uh, Thunder was my nickname way before Burlesque. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know how that happened. It was a bunch of like guy friends I had in like high school or college. High school going into college. And one day they just called me Thunder and it has stuck ever since. And so I always said like, 
my stage name when I got when I had to come up with one. I'm like, I want it to be something I already know. Mm-hmm. That and makes so, sense. Thunder was yeah. the last name. And then Jezebel is the first one. And my sister helped me come up with that one. And I was like, oh, I kind of like it. I like that. And it's really funny because thinking about it now, I feel like it was, um, is it kismet? Is that the word I'm mm-hmm. looking for? Like yeah. it was just like meant to be because I love how powerful thunder is. But Jezebel's really delicate and cute. It cutesy. is a beautiful name. And thank yeah. you. And I feel like that is me. I'm right. like unexpected like punch <laughs> no really though and I, I think that too because people people do have an assumption when they look at certain people mm-hmm. they'll you know you're going to be this way because you are very delicate and you're and you're very refined so people imagine like oh she's not gonna cuss oh she's not gonna do this or that <laughs> yeah. and it's like uh you know guess what guess Fucking what cuss. chicken butt <laughs> no um I I I was uh thinking about this idea that how similar what we do is and there's times when we'll have um people will want to take a picture Mm -hmm. or or there'll be like a paid meet and greet situation where you're like oh i'm kind of being wrangled into this thing where in order for them to sell these tickets they have to have this paid meet and greet Mm -hmm. and i i know personally like i want to take a picture with everybody i if you if you ask me to take a picture especially me being now what 13 years after drag race i'm flattered so I'm, yeah. I'll be at Walmart and people are like, can I take a picture? And I'm like, you remember who I am? Of course. Yes, let's take a picture. <laughs> but there are situations where we're in where you are wrangled into the spot and then people are like, oh, hold on. Can you get a picture? And you're like, I'm kind of committed to doing these ones. And so afterwards mm-hmm. I can. But then you it ends up where people are like, oh, this bitch doesn't want to do a picture. She wants to be shitty. Oh. And it's, you know. Yeah. It's it's a tough situation to be in because you want everyone to be happy because you're happy. Mm -hmm. Has that happened to you? Uh, I think I'm too much of a people pleaser. Yeah. That I'm like, oh, hold on. Oh, even though my inside is like, I just want to go in the backstage and do nothing and take off my makeup. Right. (laughs) I come off stage and I like to talk to my friends, but I'm so awkward, Mm -hmm. like talking to new people. So I'm always like, it gives me anxiety. But I go out there because, yeah, they expect you to go out there and like, they want to say kind things and it's really nice. And so I always try to make an effort to just get to everybody. Right. Like even if someone walks away, I'm like, oh, remember, I didn't forget. Right. I'm like, please like me. <laughs> well, that's an interesting thing about what we do is that it, because it is, you know, you're on stage by yourself. And a lot of people, maybe family or or other friends that don't do what we do, think that we always love the attention and the attention's wonderful. But there's a lot of us are really like verge sometimes on being introverted because mm-hmm. when it's quiet time, it's like super quiet time, like vegging out, yes. watching TV. People are like, oh, you must go to all the parties and do this <laughs> and that. And while it's wonderful to be invited and I don't want anyone to stop inviting oh. me, please invite me because some of them I want to go to. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of times you're like, when I finally have quiet time, oh, it's magical. Like that yes, is magical. It is. I, for sure. I will sit at home and binge watch. What did I just, I binge watched Wednesday the other day. Oh, yeah. Just at home. I had no gigs and I was like, I'm just going to chill and eat and watch Netflix. Yeah. By myself. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, no, it is, it's a weird thing. I, what do I tell people? It's like, I want attention, but I don't want attention. Right. It's like, it, and yeah, it's a thing with performers. I feel like it's a, there's a lot of people. There's, I feel like a small amount of people who just want all the attention all the right. time. I think it's, there's more of us who are like, uh, I want to uh, schedule the attention. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah schedule exactly. It. Let me control right. it somehow. No, yeah. essential to what you do, I feel like there is one thing that is so sexy that can happen, even if nothing else happens, watching someone just remove one thing and do it so methodically or so interesting. Um, and often that's a glove. Mm-hmm. And you that's something that you have just mastered. It's what you do. It's what you oh. know. It's what you can you show us? OK, wait, can I stand up or I have to do this all sitting down, right? You know, you can sit there and put them on. Yeah. Look how pretty those are. Thank you. Do you uh, do you? design or craft or stone and embellish any of your own things or do you have that done both okay. <laughs> I yeah can't, it makes sense yeah i can't do any fancy like designs but if you want me to like rhinestone a glove like this i just like sit for hours and just right. da, 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 da. do you like doing it or is it like tedious to you i like doing it when there's no 
no like parameter right so if it's like again if it's like a design and someone's like create this spiral and do these fancy things i'm like i don't want to do it but if <laughs> that's I can what sit, i say yeah, if i can sit and just fully encrust this with different red rhinestones or shoes i've done my shoes before and i just sit there and watch tv and i'm like doop boop boop and this i sewed the feathers on myself which was uh that was an experiment <laughs> yeah, because sometimes when you do it and then you put it on, you're like, oh, it doesn't, it's not going to stretch. Yeah, I learned, I did learn that. I learned that the hard way. That and then rhinestones too. When you rhinestone something like a G string, you have to stretch it out because mm. the glue will like make it tighter. Mm -hmm. So I put it around a shoe box and I stretch it out. My corsets I put like on a bag and I like stretch them out a little bit and tighten them up. I've so done my things. G strings on the back of a car and that usually stretches them out just enough <laughs> to get like, them. What? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, they're usually already crested. So, uh, but you know, it's not rhinestones, but it's certainly textural, which is fine. Oh, all right. Okay, so show us how you do this. I want to see this. I want to know okay. from a pro. A pro. All right. Ooh, okay. Are you giving them something they can feel in this dress? Oh, yes. 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 I love it. Okay. Oh. Wow. <laughs> that is so pretty. Now, what happens if you're wearing white gloves? You don't. Ooh, <laughs> you don't, right? No, you do, and you get red lipstick all over It just them. happens. It just, yeah. And you just hope no one sees when you're presenting. Right. <laughs> it does get a point where when you're doing that, that the because of like the you know you want to get use out of this stuff again obviously mm -hmm. so maybe like jewel tones are best because you know you're you're not going to be as noticeable or is there like a certain cleaning yeah. trick everyone knows <sighs> no cleaning no you just you just keep going well because those are perfectly clean I mean <laughs> yeah. obviously your things are perfectly clean yeah they have lipstick on them no, but, no one's going to see know. that no no of course not some people put little like nails now I've seen that a uh -huh. lot they put nails outside the gloves to kind of hide the marks um. But also, I, I just told someone this the other day, like, you have to, before you take a glove off with your fingers or your teeth, you have to prep them. You have to, like, pull them a little bit away from your nails so you're not actually biting your fingers or right. your nails. And so I feel like that helps because it just, like, gets the teeth. Right. Not really a lip. You know? Do you always do the the left hand or the right hand? Do you have a, a go-to? Oh. Right. Hold right. my right first. Yeah. Not today, but my right first. Usually. Now, do you ever do it? And obviously, all your things need to come back to you. But do you ever have people that think like, oh, that's a gift because it came off. Oh. And they try to take it. Thankfully, not yet. Okay. <laughs> but I know many of people it's happened to. Yeah. It actually just happened to a friend of mine in New York. Someone took her boa. It was like a $1,000 boa. That is not Because people cool. don't realize how expensive our things are, right. how they can be, especially if you buy these cheap Amazon gloves and you put rhinestones on it. The rhinestones cost hundreds of dollars. They do. They really do. It's really ridiculous, but they look so good. <laughs> well, it's so interesting in what we do because we are presenting on stage. Mm -hmm. So some things that read on stage are less expensive than other things. So, for instance, like the glove, like by itself may seem affordable to other people, but then the embellishment is so much more. I remember the first time I ever bought rhinestones at Bohemian, my friend Philip Dominguez, who used to, my friend Philip Dominguez, who mm -hmm. used to be in drag and is now a real estate agent, oh. but he used to do drag and his name was Tyra and he, uh, he lives in Long Beach. And he, all he did was he would buy all of his corsets and all of his wear from Versatile Fashions in Orange County when they were still around oh, and in, a, in an actual store. And he would rhinestone everything. And he followed Dita, which they're still they're now friends. Mm. But he was a makeup artist. Anyway, he only did burlesque numbers. Oh. That's all he did. And they were gorgeous. I still have pictures. I'm going to show you pictures. Yeah. Um, and he took me, he was like, oh, you should rhine something, rhinestone something, sissy. Like, let's go get something. So I was, I did a bra and I thought, oh, well, he only uses so much. And then he's like, we're going to have to get a little bit more for yours, but don't worry. <laughs> so then I remember we saved up all of our tips and we went to Bohemian and we went up to the lady and the lady was like, oh, it's going to be this much. And I said, well, I'm going to need 10 gross. And to me, that was like, you know, impossible. Yeah. And and she was like, well, it's going to be, you know, however oh. much it was going to be. It was like a hundred dollars. And so Philip goes, I said, all right, well, I'm going to go and I'll be right back. And he goes, 
where are you going? I said, well, I'm going to go get the car. He's like, for what? I'm like, for the stones. <laughs> and he's like, Sit. no, Delta. Like, it, you're, we don't need to get the car. And when she handed me, girl, this little bag, that little packet stapled to the cardboard like that. Yeah. She's like, here you go. That's 148. I'm like, yeah, I thought it was going to be like feed, mm, like a bag of feed. I wish. God, I wish. I feel like that exists, but they it might does not be a sparkly. A little bit. Yeah, they might not be a sparkly right. jewels. But uh, yeah, rhinestones are ridiculously expensive, but right. they just... They look so good. They I do. I used to come into burlesque and be like, I don't need rhinestones. Right. You don't need it. Like, no one needs it. But then the longer you're in the game of and something, you you're like, it, oh. it mm-hmm. just elevates it a little bit. You look more expensive. When you're putting so much work in, and so much of your heart into it, you're like, I could maybe if I just save, like mm-hmm. on, on a few important pieces, just like you said, the gloves, like yeah. in what you're wearing now, which obviously you're not doing an on stage act. But even with just the stones on the gloves, like it just took t- it to the next level where people yeah. are really watching that. Mm-hmm. It's so pretty. And the feathers. Feathers are also ostrich Insane. feathers, ridiculously expensive. Rightfully so. It's all rightfully so. But yeah. But when you look at the movement of like <laughs> a, a, a ostrich feather and then the movement of like a, a <laughs> chicken turkey. feather yeah, or a turkey. turkey. Yeah. You know, I mean, and the molting on stage. Sure, that used to happen to me too. Before I re- realized ostrich feathers were the thing to get, I was like, "They're oh, too pretty." I just leave a trail of feathers everywhere I go. They're too pretty. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so interesting how what you use uh, can sort of make or break uh, a look, and so you just sort of add as you go. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, that's the key. I feel like that's the key is to start with the base, mm-hmm. and then as you get money, as you save up, like you said, you just add things to it as you go along i feel like that those are the acts maybe the i wonder if it's the same in drag but on in burlesque i think those are the acts that are like that's what i'm looking for like really really good are the ones you put a lot of effort into mm-hmm. and you grow over the years with sure it. i feel like those are the acts that people can see and they can feel the passion behind it when you've put so much work into it over time right instead of just showing up and being like look i'm sparkly instantly right you know that's it's cool but it's a different vibe yeah. Yeah, I definitely remember like, you know, the idea or and I always I always think that it's important to have um sort of those basics. Like you're if you're gonna start, maybe you start with like a black satin corset and you're like, This mm-hmm. is gonna take me along, this is gonna travel really well. And then I'm gonna have, you know, gloves. And so you do one basic look and then you add to that and you don't you know, you don't really start out the gate with like, I'm gonna spend three thousand dollars on a baby blue corset. Yeah. Well, what else do you have to add to it? If you don't mm-hmm. have anything else, you know, you're not going to get your money's worth. Yeah. It yeah. takes a moment. Some people have money like that. I wish I did. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We're going to. We I have are to on dig our in way. this couch for like coins. And right. Like, We're on our way. It's going to be a new year soon. <laughs> it's true. It's going to be our year to have all this money. Let's manifest it. I mean, we might as well. They yeah. say just speak it. Speak it into existence. Yes. I don't, I, I hope you're listening. Up there. <laughs> Let's take a break. And we're back. We are just, yeah, we're just uh, just talking about sort of the the ins and outs uh, of that stuff. Off camera, we were just talking yeah. briefly about situations where we do, like, you know, we're trying to make our money. We're trying to do our art. We're trying mm-hmm. to make our money. We're trying to do those things. And sometimes you're in situations where it's just, uh, it's difficult, but we have to strike that balance. Yeah. Like, there's being cordial with people, being friendly with people, being friends with people. Yes. and. I don't have time for drama. No. No. I want to do my thing and entertain people. And I already got, I have my own personal drama I got to deal with. I don't need anyone else's extra drama. Right. I can't. Right. I can't do it. It's a lot of energy. It's too much energy. Yeah. Especially when you're trying yeah. to get on stage. You're like, I just need to like woosah. Right. <laughs> like, right. And right. do my thing. I don't need your extra. <laughs> right. I mean, I agree. Well, you know, this is a part of the podcast uh, called uh, Read Me Delta. This is where people will send in letters to us and we just answer them. I mean, sometimes, sometimes they're intense. (laughs) Sometimes they're just like fun. I've heard. I don't know what, I don't get to see them until they, uh, they show up here. So. Oh boy. um, I know. Let me see. I have so much crap on my table. Is there a plead the fifth answer? There is. You, 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 you don't have, if something's uncomfortable, you know, by all means, just ignore it. Okay. Oh my gosh. There's that. I'm excited and scared at the same time. 
Don't be scared. <laughs> everyone that everyone that listens to the podcast or watches is nice. That's I nice. Hey, babes. My name is Sussy, Sussy Lamaya. I'm a gay activist and drag performer, but my question regards my day gig as a corporate doll in a pharmaceutical company. I work with so many trades gals. I mean, nerdy scientific daddies with beards and dad bods. Very that. Anyway, I have many Zoom meetings with them. And since we're mostly working from home, often long hours of one on one to late into the evening, I would like to know how I can flirt and show interest through Zoom calls. (laughs) <laughs> okay this okay i no, usually I get many comp- <laughs> okay. i know oh, we were just talking about zoom earlier um i usually get many compliments on my work and my smile and i'm 78 percent sure two of my colleagues definitely desire my bussy oh. oh my god so i need to know how i can seal the deal they don't know I'm gay, so I've considered maybe having poppers or a dildo in the background. Is that cute? Thanks, Delta and <laughs> Jezebel. Oh, Love God. the podcast. Love you both. Yes, background. I like. <laughs> I mean, okay, so listen. I mean, I don't know if you've ever been on a Zoom call and been like not prepared for the Zoom call and you're like knocking stuff off the table. Like my McDonald's oh my is sitting gosh. up here or whatever. Yes. The blurry feature saved my life. Okay. The blurred background. when that Because that wasn't a thing at first. Right. Then they started being like, oh, shit. Yeah, people have things they don't want seen. So my bedroom is all cluttered, but like I have blurred out. So it looks really soft and right. inconspicuous. Right. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, my God. That's a hard. Yeah. Well, I this like person those. is 78% sure that two colleagues <laughs> want them. It's very um, specific. Uh, very specific. <laughs> they want to know if they should be flirting on Zoom in a, in a professional setting. How do you feel Ooh. about flirting on Zoom? Because, you know, what we do, what we do as entertainers yeah. is also social in a way. Mm-hmm. Do do people do people flirt with you and, and think that you're, you know, maybe available for yes. hanging out later? Yes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'm okay with it. Sure. And sure. other times I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> Do people ever think that what you're doing is also a, 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 a an additional paid service? Oh, maybe. I because I, 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 think... I mean I'm not flossing, but that's happened. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Like, you, it's like people slide into your DMs. They're like, if I pay you a little bit, can I get a private show? Mm-hmm. I'm good. I'm like, that's been I'm said so many times. <laughs> How about you just come tip me? Yeah. <laughs> come do a show. show. Exactly. I have so many people that like follow me and comment on everything. And during lockdown, I was like, oh, I have merch. Uh-huh. Hey, buy some merch. And those of the people didn't buy any merch. Oh, and I'm no. like, really? You want to compliment and and comment on everything, but you don't want to buy my right. merch. How can I support you? Weird. <laughs> How okay. can I support you while I'm wearing this T-shirt of this other person that's got more money than God? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. But I have dated in the, in the scene mm-hmm. of burlesque. And I was like. Oh, this probably is not a good idea. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because then you still have to see those people. Sure. It's gotten better. It's better because years have gone by, you know, but immediately in the moment it was like, oh, we're broken up. This is weird. Mm -hmm. This is weird. I still see you coming to my shows. This is weird. Mm -hmm. And you went out of your way to come to this show. Right. Weird. Something's (laughs) happening here. Uh, Have you ever been in a corporate setting like this person where you wanted to flirt in a corporate setting or... Mm. Do you, what do you think this person should do? Should they just I, avoid it? Ooh, my 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 logical brain says avoid it, but then my other burlesque brain is like, go for it. Yeah, do it, try it. You know, maybe a little side private chat, right? Because they have that on Zoom. You can private chat someone directly. Maybe slide a little like cheeky comment in there. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I what mean, do you, you know, Sussy, I feel like. I feel like maybe not flirting on Zoom, but making sure they have access to your social like network. So like, mm-hmm. oh, do you follow me on Instagram? Like maybe you're not supposed to at your job. I don't know. That but, part. you know, maybe that's a way. Maybe checking. I mean, what it sounds like to me is, I mean, are these people. Oh, gosh, I don't know. I don't know how to word this without without sounding crude or or exclusive or inclusive. But I mean. Do, do you know that they're interested in you like publicly? Like would they would they go out with you or are they just looking to hook up? Because if they're just looking to hook up, you're probably going to find them on an app somewhere on the down low. And if that's the case and you just want to have sex with them, well, then just have sex with them and who cares? Yeah. But 
Um, you know, if you're looking to date them or something, I feel like maybe you have to look for them also on an app where they publicly have their picture and yeah. they're like, hi, my name is so-and-so. I work in the pharmaceutical industry. I'm looking for like-minded individuals. And then you're like, hey, I think we work for the same company. I'd like to carry <laughs> yeah. on this conversation outside of work. Maybe that might be safer because you might be risking your job. And that's, yeah. that's, that's a little scary. That's what my logical brain is saying. Like, yeah. that's against the rules. But sometimes it's fun. Uh, there's a prophetess <laughs> that I follow, um, goes by Megan the Stallion, and she <laughs> said, I've never had to chase dick in my life. And I don't think you've ever had to either. So don't, don't chase it. Don't chase it. That's true. Um, what about another letter? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that one was... There's a code <laughs> on the bottom of these, these letters that um, my... Producer Mark writes on there, and it kind of reminds me. Like sometimes I'll order wigs that come from Asian countries, and yeah. they'll just have codes on them because it's whatever code that goes for like the shipping. Yeah, and that's what this kind of looks like. Why are there codes? On I don't know. It just says JT two. Oh. And then the other oh. one said something else. Hmm. JT one. Oh. Who okay. knows? Oh, I know what it is. What is it? You're Jezebel. Th Jezebel. You're Jezebel Thunder. Oh, it's me. I'm on there. <laughs> you're G you're JT. Uh... <laughs> I don't know much about science. <laughs> okay. Hello, Madam Delta. Hello. I'm writing to ask you, have you ever tried the spicy pickle chips from Ruffles? If you haven't, I'm terribly sorry. And if you have, where did you find them? My partner and I discovered them at Save Mart in our hometown and had to buy four bags as we could not find them anywhere else. And after a move to another state, it's like they never existed. I've tried my best to find them locally, calling and visiting about every grocery and convenience store, even resorted to emailing Ruffles headquarters awaiting for a response from them. Wow. Have you ever had a beloved snack that got discontinued? I know you've touched on fast food items that have sadly left your life, but what about snacks? Whether it's a boxed pastry, bagged popcorn, etc., what has left the touch of your lips that you desperately wish to have back? Also, any tips on snack loss coping, which would be much appreciated? Stay fabulous, Gabby Gibbs. Wow, that's a great question. That is a great question. Do you have any I snack love foods snacks. that are not around anymore, or think? Well, first of all, have you ever tried these? Pickle chips ruffles. I've never tried them. No, but I would eat them. I would try them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kettle Brand has like dill pickle. And they're good. They are so good. I did not think they were going to be good and they were delicious. Um, you know what's oh gross? Gosh, what is gross? Um, Walmart has a brand. Uh, they did it like a couple of years ago and they're, they have great value brand, which I love. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I, there's actually somebody on TikTok I follow that tells you the best great value items to buy and which Ooh, ones not to buy. TikTok's so helpful. It is. <laughs> but one thing they had that was really fucking gross was hot dog flavored potato chips. Why was but that why a did thing? I buy them? That's your question. <laughs> why would I buy them? I mean, curiosity, right? A dollar ninety seven. Oh yeah. I'm try it. I mean, I might. I'm a gambler. I might try. It. <laughs> and then you're like, never again. Ever. No, but no. pickles. I'm down for that. Yeah. Um, a snack that I. Oh gosh. I'm pretty sure there have been some. Mm -hmm. There are definitely some that I can only get in like Canada or London. Okay. That I love. And so message to this person is you got to find maybe someone that you know in that space and then have them ship it to you. That's what you got to do. That's what you, yeah. Or Amazon. Sometimes Amazon. Sometimes they have but it. But I like friends that can just go out and buy it for me and ship it to me. It's a game changer. Right. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I was in love forever and ever and ever with this little Debbie snack called Banana Twins. I've never heard and of And they are yellow cakes that come almost like a lady finger in a way. Ooh. And there's two in there, and they are just like a yellow banana cake. Not with, a Twinkie. Not a Twinkie. Oh. With a, with a white cream in the middle, and then they're like dipped in probably white chocolate that's been flavored like banana. And they're just <sighs> called Banana Twins. And then they got rid of them. And then they, I saw them a few other times. And yeah. Then, here's another thing that trips me out. Um, did you know that... You know how like 99 cent stores now like a dollar 29 store. Mm -hmm. Same with Dollar Tree. Yes. And then they do have like an extended area where they're like these are some tech items that are 4.99 or yeah. some food items. Mm -hmm. I have always uh whenever I've been there I'm like, "Oh, should we get something sweet? Like maybe we'll get a little Debbie something." I always thought they were a dollar. 
but they're like two ninety nine or one ninety nine. <laughs> Little Debbie's? Yeah, they're at the dollar Why? store. I, I don't know. It's like, isn't it just like literally plastic that's like just been melted down? <laughs> yeah. I know it's absolutely horrible. It's only been sitting there for fifteen years on the yeah. shelf. Yeah. <laughs> and I, because I wow. remember like looking at my receipt, and I was like, two, what's two ninety nine? Little, I can get that at this regular store. For less than a dollar, probably. Uh, Probably. Wow. Maybe not. These banana things sound delicious. I love artificial banana flavored anything. Really? I love artificial. I love um, uh, banana Laffy Taffy is my favorite. I've never had that. Um, I love banana twins. I love banana milkshakes. Oh, yeah. I love I love like the yogurt that's like strawberry banana, which is usually the one people are like, oh, that's like not the one. I'll like it. I love bananas. A lot of people don't like bananas. I love bananas. You like and, bananas and the flavor. I and I love like an actual banana. Did you know? Speaking of TikTok, yeah. is, What do I? Why do I have this information? <laughs> but like, banana has the least amount of sugar or glucose in it when it is the least ripe. So the greener it is, oh. so the more you know when people get like the bana- the bananas start to get spotted. Mm-hmm. I don't know about in your family, but my family's always like. My aunts or my mom will be like, those are ready for banana bread. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, you're not going to make banana bread. You've made banana bread like three times in my life. <laughs> They're always like, those are ready for banana bread. <laughs> those are the best tasting bananas. I don't like when they're oh, you really like them. green. I like them bruised. And that's when they have all the sweetness. Of course. That's when they're extra sweet. That's why I like them. Yeah. Have you? Do you know anybody that does a burlesque act where they slip on a banana peel? That could be my act. Oh, yeah. I think you should do it. I don't know anyone that does. There might be, but I feel like you should do it. Do you know that I yeah. had this little number I used to do? And um, it's it's been, uh, you know, I'm not going to floss. Do it. It's been <laughs> imitated, but never duplicated. Oh. At least in the drag <laughs> world. At least in the drag world, because nothing really happened. But it was my mini mouse strip tease. Where the whole thing would strip off. There was gloves. There was this. There was a, there was panties. There was everything. Oh and essentially what it strips down to is that Minnie Mouse is just a little mouse. So she's wearing a black velvet cat suit. That's great. It's silly, right? I need right? to see that. I need to see it. It's fine. Bring it back. <laughs> I, will, I should bring it back. Yeah. I, I had a friend that was been on the show, Eddie DeBar. Oh, that know helped, Eddie. You know Eddie. Mm-hmm. Um, that got me shoes for it that were like the Minnie Mouse, like... Big shoes, like the oh, whole yeah, thing the is little, there. Like, like a heel, like a yeah. red or yellow. You have to put your foot inside and strap it in. Oh, that's fun. It's so silly. Ugh, I need so pictures silly. of that too. Yeah. <laughs> I, my, my friend, Martin, um, did this rendering of it. So there's like a picture. I'll send you the picture of it. Yes. But there's also some. I should do it again. Yeah, I it's think fun. so. I need to see it. We that. all need to see it. The world needs to see it. We all need to. We all need to. Because I was going to ask you. I'm like, what? what is a good... Uh, beginner sort of thing to do is there is there a, a something that a beginner in burlesque could do like an act like an act or a number or a song that maybe is like mm. a good go-to obviously the stripper by david rose is yeah always popular. those are always popular those songs that are they all sound quite similar but mm-hmm. they're always like you know easy peasy to dance to um that's pretty good yeah and just maybe a classic strip tease just wear mm-hmm. a dress get a corset some gloves a bra yeah. Have you ever been somewhere and not had everything you needed and just had to like just yes. go with it? Yes, yes, I have. Like I said before, everything that's been everyone's nightmare has happened to me. That actually happened to me the first time ever at Hamburger Mary's. Okay. Doing a show there. And I forgot my uh, skirt for my costume. And Delilah, do you remember Delilah? Mm-hmm. Demi- yeah, Delilah Demila was there. And she was like, you can borrow mine, girl. And I was like, you're a size zero. <laughs> I'm a size 12. Nah. <laughs> Not so what did you do? I don't remember what I did, but I remember her offering me her Aww. her skirt and me being like, "That's not gonna fit." And I think I just went out there in regular because I was also wearing like full coverage underwear at that time. Okay, because that's when I first started, and I was like, "I don't want to wear a thong ever." Right and now, I'm like, and now you're just cheeks out, out. <laughs> or just cheeks, <laughs> always cheeks out. <laughs> Never say never. Never. That's what I've learned. Never say never because right. it's going to happen eventually. I think I just went out there with like full coverage black underwear and just was like, whatever happens. I mean, it's a look. Yeah. You're setting the <laughs> mood. So, I mean, it really, uh, yeah. you know, if, if it's you, what do you Make maybe just work. take certain things a little bit longer and yeah. like, I would guess, time it out? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Go into the audience, which is actually something I learned from being in drag shows in burlesque. Really? I learned how to be more fluid with my choreography and my act to come in and out of it because of drag shows. Being really? in drag shows. Yeah. Because people were like, 
I remember Calpurnia and like whoever else would host, you know, bingo, and they'd be like, oh, our next performer is a burlesque gal. Please throw the money on the stage. And mm-hmm. no one does that. They just want to right. be in their seats. And they want you to come to them. Sure. So I was like, oh, how do I get this money? <laughs> So I had to go out there and like break my choreography that was so like strict to go get money. Mm-hmm. And I started to be like, oh, that I can that's not so bad. Like I can come in and right. out of things and make it work. So I yeah, and I think that's like you said, we learn stuff. Like I I learned from watching burlesque entertainers. Like I I like to not lose eye contact with people. So mm. I love to look at people, especially and this may sound like a little maybe perverted or something. I don't know. But even when I know people are kind of uncomfortable, <laughs> yeah. like I like to keep eye contact with them because I want them to know that like <laughs> I want you to know what I'm doing here is with you. Yeah. And I want you to be with me in this. And I feel like it's I feel like it's sexy. I feel like it it's is. like sensual to like be in an audience and do that, especially when it's people that have never seen it before. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's just a place in drag and burlesque that is so there is a heightened sensuality to it where, you know, people may call it like I fucking someone or 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 fucking with their mind or whatever. But there are definitely uh, people, especially as we are now sort of understanding that, like the difference between gender and sexuality we're understanding that that people love people people love and respond to role play. Mm-hmm. They love and and respond to uh, sort of like giving power to someone else or taking power. And um, it's it does it doesn't have to be frightening. It yeah. can just be like, oh my gosh, in this moment, I'm so attracted to this mood that you've set for me, and now I either want to respond to it or I want to take it and do it too. Yeah. Yeah, right. Like yeah. I, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that because you are so enamored with this this entertainer it doesn't mean that you necessarily want them. You might want what they have, mm. that power. And you're like, I want to take that for myself. And I really feel like as from watching burlesque entertainers, I've been able to to take with me like sort of this like long. I take a I take a while. I take yeah. a while to get there. I like to take the people tease. on a long walk. I like it. I mm. love it. The slow burn. Right. Yeah, right. That's what we call it. I have a hard time with slow burns. <laughs> Do you? I'm always like, I gotta move, I gotta move. Just shaking, yeah. going crazy, velvet got... hammer, like. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, velvet hammer. Yeah, I have to do a thing. Yeah. I'm getting better, but no, I I totally agree with you. Like that, people, people, you can change their mindset. I feel mm-hmm. like that it happens with a lot of performances, but I feel like it really happens a lot in burlesque and drag because we break that fourth wall. Right. You cannot ignore us. Right. We are here, right, and we see you. <laughs> You see us. We know that you see us. And we're going to, like, call attention to it somehow. Right. And I feel like people are a little frightened of that. But they're also, like, they like it. They're, like... And I think we're only stronger. Like, as a drag queen, I feel like I'm only stronger by having um, other entertainers, other other burlesque, uh, you know, uh, people who identify as female burlesque entertainers, male p- male identifying burlesque entertainers, drag kings. Mm-hmm. Uh, I learned so much about what I do by being around in this like like-minded thing that you can just watch. I've shared this story before. Land Insider, like who is one of the most gorgeous, gorgeous people in the world in and out of drag. Mm-hmm. Like it took me forever. Like I- I've been sitting here and like adjusting this dress, right? <laughs> And it, it's going to show up on camera at some point. But I remember one time saying, and I've shared this story a million times, but I, I can't not share it with people, saying to Landon, I don't know why my boobs always look weird in my dresses. And Landon was like, looking, looking. We were doing the brunch, and he was doing his face. And finally, he was like, do you know why? It's because the way that you're projecting your breasts when you create them is not the way that the clothing is designed. It's designed for a teardrop breast. Therefore, oh. <laughs> when he's like, and your breasts look great when they're up, but they're not designed for the the clothing is designed for something to sit the way that the model is sitting. The model mm. is not it's not designed for the model to be in a push up bra with the breasts like this. <laughs> it's meant to be how they would be worn daily. And I thought it took a, a, a someone who identifies yeah. as a woman dressed as a man <laughs> yeah. to sit next to me and tell me dressed as a woman <laughs> who's really a man. <laughs> Let's just break this down for you. Like, you know what I mean? We're so much stronger when we have like one another to go. Well, let me give you my observation as I live it. Yep. Not knocking you, just saying, maybe try this. Mm -hmm. 
this it's could work. So true. That community. Yeah. Right. It is like there is some drama in the community of right. like, burlesque, drag, what have you. But of course, it's also there's a lot of togetherness, a lot of helpfulness. And I really, really appreciate that. Right. I appreciate all the communities I get to be a part of. So who do you hate? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're not doing that. Well, actually, no, I'm just kidding. No. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you for this having me. This is so fun. Me. This was fun. I love this. This is like me this too. is like literally my holiday dream. Yay! You are like the 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 Christmas <laughs> angel for the show. This is what we needed. Thank you. I'm happy that you're I really here. appreciate you. Um, where can people find you on social media? Um, ugh, I made my name the most difficult. Jessabel Thunder on Instagram. Okay. Right? They can spell it out. J-E-S-S-A-B-E-L-L-E Thunder. Or you can type Jess and Thunder with no vowels. And it'll just pop up. And it'll also pop up. Yeah. It's complicated. <laughs> do you ever do you ever have people that you follow on Instagram and then all of a sudden you can't find their name and you have to like type the whole name out and yes. you're like and then it's all Facebook and I'm like <laughs> oh, Facebook yeah. I don't even have a Facebook account. <laughs> I don't know why it does that. It's very annoying. It is annoying. And you have to keep typing the name and then the it'll appear three times. Uh huh. And you have to just be like, I think it's this one. Right. It's weird. Yeah. And they're always changing things. I hate it. But I uh it. anywhere else? Twitter. No, I don't. Uh, yeah, farmers only. Christian Mingle. You could Just be kidding. there. Who no, knows? I'm not there. <laughs> no, I don't do Twitter. I don't understand Twitter. Just TikTok. I have a TikTok. TikTok I try. Is good. TikTok I try. is good. It's, I love it. It's a black hole. Yeah. I try not to open it. And then I just, I'm, my hours are gone after I open it. Oh, I, I go to bed with it and I'm like, and yeah. I'm falling asleep <laughs> or I'll have my phone like this and I'll, it'll drop on my face and I'm like, go to bed. <laughs> what is so hard scrolling. about it? <laughs> it's so hard. It's so addicting. That's what they wanted and they got it. And they got it. They yeah. got it. Thank you all for listening to Very Delta. You can now search for Very Delta on your podcast apps. We come out every single Monday. So find us here on the Mom Podcast YouTube channel as well, where you can watch this talk show every single week. And a special hello, by the way, to everyone watching the talk show on YouTube. Also, you know what's Very Delta? Subscribing to Mom Podcast so you don't miss an episode. Send all of your questions to readmedelta at gmail.com. We want questions. I would say comments, but we don't always want comments. No, questions were good. Unless they're good comments. Yeah. Like, gosh, I watched the episode with <laughs> Jezebel and you both looked like you were dropped from heaven. Oh. That's what we want them to say. <laughs> and we love the flowers in your hair from yeah. Dollar Tree. Flowers, Dollar Tree. <laughs> we did it. We did it. That's what we're saying. We earlier, some things are very expensive, sometimes they're not, but all together it all works. Yeah. It all works. Yeah. You can get from Dollar Tree, you can get custom, just mix it all up. It's mm -hmm. fine. Yes. Um, you can follow me on Instagram also at Delta Work and now dedicated socials for the show at Very Delta. So there is a Very Delta account on Instagram and TikTok and you can get clips and updates all about the show. And of course, join me here next week for another episode. And until then, keep things very Delta. To listen to Very Delta one day early and ad-free, sign up for Mom Plus at mompodcasts.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom. Hosted by Delta Work and produced by Mark Jacobs. Engineered by Margo Padilla and editing by Doug Robertson. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, and Joe Cilio. 